HC exam question videos. In this video, I'm going to cover one of the past HC exam questions on the activity and temperature chapter. I'll, in a second, I'll read the actual question, and once I've read the question, I'll give you guys about five seconds to pause the video. And once you've paused the video, attempt the question, and when you're ready, just press play, and I'll go over the actual answer itself. So I'll read the question now. It says, use an example to outline the role of the nervous system in maintaining homeostasis, and that's worth three marks. Right, so pause the video now. Attempt the question, and when you're ready, press play, and I'll go over the answer step by step. All right, so I'm back. So for this kind of question, you need to uh, look at the actual question. It says, use an example. Oops, use an example to outline the role of the nervous system in maintaining homeostasis. So first of all, we have to give an actual example. So in this case, we're going to talk about thermal regulation as our example, thermal regulation. What I'll also do is I'll just go through what the parts of the nervous system, parts of the nervous system, can you give them a quick idea of what actually makes up, makes up the nervous system? And then I'll explain what role these parts, so what role these parts play in homeostasis. And if I do all that, I get my three marks out of three. So the first sentence, which is the nervous system consists of the central nervous system, brain and spine, and the peripheral nervous system, nerves and receptors. So here I've given um, you know, what, is, what makes up the nervous system, the parts of the nervous system, which were the brain and the spine, that's part of the ner central nervous system, and the nerves and the receptors, part of the peripheral nervous system. That's my first statement. Then I've gone into... Um, the example, so I talk about thermoregulation. In thermoregulation, the detection of the stimulus occurs at the thermoreceptors, which is part of the nervous system. The message then gets sent from the thermoreceptors via neurons to hypothalamus, both of which are part of the nervous system. So now I've covered, you know, I've given the example, but I also do the second part, which was what role do these parts play in homeostasis, using that specific example. So here again, the specific example was the specific example was thermoregulation, and I said that they play a part in detection. So detection of stimulus occurs at the detection occurs at the thermoreceptors, and the thermoreceptors were part of the nervous system, which is part of the nervous system. And then the message then gets sent from the thermoreceptors via neurons to the hypothalamus. So the whole sending of the message, both of which are part of the nervous system. So again, the green here is what role do they play in homeostasis? The help of detection, and uh, in a second I explain that they also help in response. So here the next part is the hypothalamus, being the control center, decides what to do with the message and sends a message via neurons to affect the organs that will produce the response. For example, sweat glands produce sweat. So the blue here, this was the example of thermoregulation. I gave you know the sweat glands produce sweat that happens in thermoregulation. It was a specific example. But again, as I've said what do the parts do, I've said that the hypothalamus is the control center and decides what to do with the message and that then sends a message to via neurons, and neurons are also part of the nervous system, to affect the organs. And all this will help produce the response in thermoregulation. So now I've given the outline of what role do these does um the nervous system play in terms of homeostasis. It basically plays a big role in detection and response. And my last statement was just summing this up for the markers. So the response will return the body temperature back to normal. That's what this response does. And detection and response plays a crucial role in homeostasis and they will not occur without the nervous system. So detection and response, what I just described just now, is really important when it comes to homeostasis. So homeostasis does not occur without detection response, and the nervous system plays a crucial role when it comes to detection response because of all these, these parts that I mentioned beforehand, because the thermoreceptors detect the change, the hypothalamus, which is part of the nervous system, responds to that change and sends a signal to the organs, the effector organs, that will then actually make the response happen. So in this case, we get one mark for giving this specific example, which was our thermoregulation. So that and then we repeat that early later as well. We gave 
them the role of the nervous system. So we get marks for you know, talking about the role of the thermoreceptors, the role of the hypothalamus, the role of the neurons. So all of these parts, they'll give us two marks. If we also include that last statement, so the detection response plays a crucial role in homeostasis and they will not occur without the nervous system. So if we gave the specific example, which was thermoregulation, and we talked about the crucial role of the nervous system. All up, that will give us three out of three. And the majority of the points come if we outline the role of the nervous system when it comes to homeostasis. And where does this kind of question come from? It comes from these two dot points. First, we had outlined the role of the nervous system in detecting and responding to environmental change. This was the whole what the role of the nervous system was when it comes to detection and response. But this dot point also says that homeostasis actually consists of detection and response. So detecting change and counteracting change, which was the response. So here we know that homeostasis actually is all about detection and response, and the nervous system helps make that happen. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.